Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers. This is Biblical Insights. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about the idea of why we need God. Not too long ago, I was watching TV, it was in the evening, and I'd been watching a, a mystery. It was a British-made mystery, and they're, they're pretty good at, at doing mysteries there. Um, and at the end, after the mystery had been solved, the two detectives were relaxing together uh, out outdoors uh, on a patio, looking out over a big valley, and there was a sunset in the distance, and it, it was really a beautiful setting. And one of the detectives, the, the older one, commented um, to his younger partner, who, before he became a policeman, was in college studying uh, theology, was going to be a, a, a priest. Um, and that didn't work out for him, and so he became a cop, right? But he was still very interested in theology and that sort of thing, and that's they, they kind of weave that in and out of the, the mystery. Uh, but the older cop w was looking at this beautiful setting, and he, he just casually asked the question, look at what we have. Why do we need God? And that struck me. I, I, I think lots of people wonder uh, about that. Why do we need God? I mean, we have the world to live in, and we have things to do. We have families, we have people to love us. Uh, what, why do we need a God? What, what role does God play in, in life? And I thought, you know, that's, that's a really good question. Why do we need God? I thought, I need to make a video about that. So that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm making a video on why we need God. And I, I think the best way to answer it is to begin with some reasons, perhaps, about why we do not, uh, you know, need God. These, these are the reasons if someone said, well, why do we need God? These things would never be on the list because this, these are just not reasons for needing God, okay? And the first one has to do with the idea of, of uh, making sure that everything in your life goes well and there's no disappointment, no challenges, no pain, no suffering, uh, nothing like that. that. That the reason you need God is so bad stuff doesn't happen. Um, not too long ago, on my Facebook page, where I, where I often post these, uh, these videos, someone had seen uh, the, a posting of one of the videos, and he rep replied, he commented in the little section down below, and he, he posted uh, a graphic, an image of a flood, and the, the flood waters were coming up, and it, I mean, you know, obviously this location where this flood was, was just destroyed. I mean, houses were mostly underwater, uh, you could see the roof of a car here and there, and the water was, you know, halfway up the house. I mean, it would just, it would have been horribly devastating, okay? And so we showed this picture, and then he said, why would anybody want to worship a God who would let things like this happen? Why pray to God for protection uh, when he's not going to answer and when he lets bad things like this happen, okay? Now, that's a valid question. That's a valid question. And, and in philosophy, we discuss those sorts of issues under the heading of the problem of evil. Uh, many of you know that I used to be a philosophy professor, and I've written a number of, of philosophy texts. And uh, in those writings, I've, I've dealt extensively with the, the problem of evil. But I think your average person, just, you know, from a day-to-day -day basis of, of living life, doesn't deal with it, you know, philosophically uh, in a technical way. They just wonder, you know, why did God let this happen? Well, there are some very good answers for that. And, and in another video, I'm going to get into that in a, in a technical way. Um, but that's not what I wanted to do today. I, I want to go in a slightly different direction. So I, I just want to begin today by saying there are a number of things that we should not expect from God, and, and that God has a, another place in our life, and it doesn't have to do 
with making sure that nothing bad happens to us. Okay, that's not God's job. Now, some people think it is. They think, well, then what's God for? What's it, what's it good for if he's not going to keep bad things from happening to us? Now, why would they ask that? I think many people ask those kind of questions and, and feel those sorts of frustrations because they haven't thought deeply about life and about the purpose of life and how adversity impacts us. The, the initial response to adversity of any kind, whether, whether it's the loss of a loved one or whether it's, it's you getting a terrible disease, like cancer, or um, whether you've lost your job, or whether there's been a natural disaster, your house is burned down, or, or there's been a flood, like the guy sent a, a, a picture of a flood, um, whatever, any sort of adversity, people think, well, this is bad. And if God was a good God, he would have stopped that. He would have kept it from happening. Well, let me suggest to you that that is not true. That is not true at all. Because God understands that adversity makes us stronger. Having to cope with life in, in, in every form, but especially the, the challenges of life, the things that are often defined as bad or evil, uh, that many times those things are what teach us the most valuable lessons and help us develop strength uh, and, and insight so that we can live better. Having to face challenges, even severe challenges. It's not a bad thing. It can be a good thing. It makes you strong. It makes you tough. It gives you wisdom. Okay? So the idea that, you know, life would be good if nothing bad happened is not a good idea, and it is not true. We would be, if, if, if we didn't ever have any adversity to deal with, we would be a bunch of weak silly, foolish little people who couldn't accomplish anything worthwhile. How do you get to, to be smart enough and strong enough to accomplish something worthwhile? By working really, really hard and overcoming challenges. That's how. That's how. Why don't children accomplish amazing things? Well, because they're just kids. They haven't dealt with any challenges yet. They, they haven't learned how to accomplish anything important. And it's going to be years and years and years and years before they can accomplish anything significant and important. And when they finally get to the point where they can, they'll, they'll be at that spot because they've come through difficulties in life and challenges and adversity and they've learned to endure they've learned to persevere you see god understands that so he doesn't take away all of the challenges and all of the problems because he knows those things help us in the long run they help us so people who want god around and they think god's job is just to make life easy for them are mistaken and they're very foolish and that's not what God's role is and he knows it's it's not good for us to have a trouble-free life we need challenges to deal with okay so God isn't there we don't need God to solve all our problems we need to learn to solve our problems ourselves God isn't there to keep bad things from happening Okay, that, bad things happen, and, and we need to learn to deal with them. That's how we grow and develop and get strong and mature and know how to live well, you see. Some people think of God as a Santa Claus, you know, and, and so I have my wish list, and I'm going to make up my wish list and mail it off to, to the great Santa in the sky. That's the way they think of God. You know, you call it prayer instead of a, a wish list, but... It's still just the same thing. It's a wish list. God, I want you to do this for me. I want you to do that for me. Uh, I need this and I need that and whatever, whatever. They do. We treat God like Santa Claus. We just want stuff from God. Well, God's not there just to give us stuff. Okay, that's, that's not... 
That's not his his purpose for for human life. That's that's not the way uh, he uh, w wants to interact with us. Just give us stuff. W what kind of a relationship would we have with God if the only reason we had a relationship with Him was because all the stuff He was going to give us? You know, one of the challenges of of uh, that wealthy people have is that they have to be very careful about who their friends are because uh, once people find out they're wealthy, they just want to be friends with the rich guy uh, or rich girl uh, because of what they might get out of it. You know, rich people can do good things for you. And and so people with money, you know, and, and, and power in this life have to be very careful who their friends are because most of them, uh, aren't, aren't real friends. They're just fair weather friends who are interested in what they might get from that rich person. Well, God doesn't want that kind of a relationship. So he doesn't hand out stuff he, <laughs> very often to people. Now, there is a way in which the New Testament speaks about God blessing us, but the blessings that come from God are not usually uh, just material things, you know, a nice big house, a nice new car, lots of money in the bank uh, so that we can take fancy vacations and wear, you know, expensive clothes and eat in expensive restaurants and have all the latest, uh, you know, technology gadgets and, you know, all this kind of stuff. You know. God doesn't just go around handing out all of that sort of thing. Sometimes he gives people talents that if they use them well, they can earn enough money to buy all those sorts of things. But that's not the same as God giving them those things. They, they often, you know, do the work to earn those things. God doesn't just go around handing out stuff. He's not Santa Claus. Okay? Well, then if we, if we start to think in those terms, then eventually we get back around to the question. You know, we start here and we, we go back around. So what is God for? Why do we need God? If we, oh, if we don't need God to solve our problems, if we don't need God to keep bad things from happening, if we don't need God to give us stuff, okay, then why do we need God? What's, what's his purpose? What's he there for? Why do we need God? Well, the reason we need God is because we need a connection with the transcendent. Because of the kind of beings we are, m minds, mental beings, not, not this physical body, you know, this is, this is just flesh. It's going to get old and die and rot and, and, and it'll be gone. Okay, but the real us, the real us, the person that is us, inside this this fleshly shell right the real us will continue to live forever why because we're a spiritual being or or a mental being we are in this in in a sense the same kind of being god is now i'm not saying we can all go be gods no don't don't take it that way but god is a mental being he's the eternally existing rational mind and he created us in his image we are like him. And because of that, because this physical context is just temporary, because the, the, the mental world is, is that which is really eternal, the spiritual world, then we need a contact with the transcendent. We need a contact with the person out there who put us here so we could learn, so we could grow, so we could develop, so we could mature, so we could get strong, so we could be the best version of ourselves. That's why he put us here in this context. And that's why we face some of the challenges we face, so that we can, we can mature and grow and, and develop our abilities and, and develop our potential, you see. We need a connection with God in, 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 in that regard. That's why we need God. Because he's transcendent, and this world is just temporary. He's bigger than this world. He's forever. This world isn't. And we need a connection with God. That's why we need God. We need God because we need to be saved. Because we're, we're little children who keep screwing things up because we don't understand. And so we have foolish ideas, and we do silly and foolish things that 
hurt other people and many times hurt ourselves, right? We make a mess of life and we need somebody to help us with that. We need somebody to forgive us. We need somebody to save us from our own foolishness and stupidity. We need somebody to help us grow beyond that into something really special. And that's what God wants to help us do. We need to have a proper purpose in life. See, where there is no God and where there is no transcendent reality, where there's just this world, where this, there's just this beautiful valley and this amazing sunset, and we go, we have this. Why do we need God? You know, if this is all we have, this, this beautiful world, if this is all we've got, and it's temporary, and we're temporary, when we die, then we're gone. We're just gone. We're done. We don't exist anymore. Then what's the purpose of life? If, if that's what life is, then, then your purpose is, is roughly similar to that dandelion that's growing in your front yard or whatever other kind of weeds you have growing in your yard, front yard, backyard, wherever. It's like a weed. You know, you spring up, you're there for a while, you spread some seeds around, and then you cease to exist, and, and all you've been is just a problem for somebody. Well, it, really? Is that what life is about? Is, is that why we're here? If you take God out of the equation, the only purpose you have is the one you choose for yourself. Maybe you want to be a doctor. Okay, a few people get to be doctors. Maybe you want to be a lawyer. Okay, a few people get to be lawyers. Or some other kind of noble purpose that helps people. Okay, and, and uh, so you help people with their physical needs or you help people with their legal needs. Or maybe you become a teacher and you help them learn to read and to write and to think at a certain level, right? And, and, all right? and and those are all good things. Those are good things. But again, if that's all there is, if that's your purpose and there is no other purpose than just whatever purpose you choose for your own individual life, okay, there's nothing beyond that, then that's pretty sad. It's weak and silly and sad because it ends and you end and you're gone. And that's all you were. But you see, that's not true. That's not the reality that actually exists. God exists, and you're created in his image, and you will live after your body dies, and after this world has ceased to exist. When our sun explodes, and our solar system is destroyed, and there is no more life here, no more physical life, we will still exist with God in a relationship with him as an individuated self, conscious, with a will, able to decide, and, and, we, and we will still be a person, you see. And because that is true, our purpose here is to learn and grow and develop into the very best person we can be, waiting for the time when we will be transitioned to the next phase of life. See, this is, this is all the idea that is taught in the Bible. And this is what Christianity teaches. Now, most theologians don't use the kind of terminology that I'm using here because they use theological terms. I tend to use philosophical terms. Uh, I was a theologian for a long time, and, and then I transitioned to philosophy, so I use philosophical language a lot. But it all means the same thing in the end. Why do we need God? because God will help us be the best person we can be in spite of all of the challenges and difficulties that we have to face in life, in spite of the adversity that we encounter. He can help us be the best person we can be. He can help us make the best of this life, which will position us to be transitioned into the next phase of life and live in a continuing relationship with God. That's why we need God. Well, those are my thoughts for the day. I hope you find them helpful. As always, I would encourage you to read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless. <laughs>